Hey, everybody. Um, once again, time for another wonderful interview. Uh, and keep in mind, it's not me doing the wonderful work. It's the people that I'm speaking to that are offering you such great practical uh, advice. Uh, I'm joined today by Ashley Jones, who is the associate or assistant director? Assistant director. Assi well, it should be associate. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I don't actually know which is better, but uh, Assistant Director of Engagement Communications at Longwood University in Virginia. Yep. What part of the state? So we're in Central Virginia, so far Central. Okay. Yeah, so it's um, about an hour south-ish of Richmond. Uh, if anyone saw the 2016 VP debate, that's my campus. That's where I Oh, work. that's right. That's right. I thought yeah. it sounded familiar. Uh, cool. Well, thank you for taking the time to chat with us during uh, these unusual times. Um, if, if you're watching, folks, uh, Ashley's in her office on campus because they haven't shut down yet uh, or totally relative to, you know, the rest of us where we're just in complete lockdown and isolation. Came in just for you. <laughs> oh, what a sweetheart. Thank you so much. <laughs> So um, you're you're in marketing communications uh, on the higher ed side. Were were you always in higher ed, career wise? Kind of, sorta. Um, yeah. Where'd you get so, your start? Yeah, so I actually graduated from Longwood with my BA in mass media communications. So it was a lot of like journalism, um, video work type stuff. Uh, so I kind of fell into this a little bit, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, like I said, like my, my background's in journalism. So uh, I met my husband We at Longwood. He graduated before me. He had the job at Longwood. Yeah. So I just kind of stayed in Farmville, a little small town, um, and bounced around a lot. You know, I did some freelance work for, you know, people in the community, but then I landed a job as a marketing assistant with Aramark, who does the campus dining here at Longwood. Um, so that's kind of how I got like my big, my first like marketing job. Did that for a few years and then went into uh, being employed by the university. So where I am now, which is the Office of Alumni and Career Services. And how long have you been with them? I had my one year in the fall. So it's probably like a okay. year and a half at this point. Cool. You like it? Yeah. Oh man, it's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, As you no can doubt. imagine, dining, managing a dining Twitter is is fun. You know, I've not. actually I've actually had students that were graphic design students that would get hired by companies like Aramark and Sodexo, and yeah. they would last maybe a year before mm -hmm. they moved on because it was very rote. It was like just the same kind of it's things the same that they thing. were making yeah yeah same There's thing really consistent. Not a lot of creativity yeah. yeah with that when you have to make something so generic that you know we need to make sure that someone who isn't computer oriented can do this on a powerpoint you know? <laughs> yeah right that's essentially right. i mean some of the files we got set were powerpoints to edit because they figured um the term that they always used was like the operators you know the managers of the locations like, we just need to make this operator usable. <laughs> I see. I see. So, well, I'm glad you've moved on from there. Um, and you're, you're settled into higher ed social media, higher ed marketing. Can you tell me what that's like for you? What do you think about the higher ed marketing sort of industry or landscape? What are your in impressions of, of it? Um, well, right now, I think we're all just holding our hands trying to get through this together. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, it's a lot of, if you're going into marketing, especially I think higher ed, hoping to get away from customer service, mm -hmm. you're in the wrong field. You Correct. know, um, social media, anywhere you go is going to be customer service at some, some level. Um, but I love higher ed for the fact that at least with my position right now, like we have student workers in our office. So I get to mentor them, have that interaction with students. But I don't have to teach some gen ed class, you know, some 100 True. level class. Right. Some kids who don't, I, 
I, I use the term kids because that's how I refer to my students. Or I think of them as my I students. I do the same thing. Yeah, I do so, the same thing. Um, Faculty do I, it too. Yeah, like I, I don't <laughs> mean it to be you're a child. I mean, like, I think of you as one of my kids. Like, I got your back. Um, yep. You know, I don't, I, I, per perfectly honest, I don't have the patience to deal with a 100 level class and teach some kid who does not care about the subject, you know. Sure. Um, but with our student workers in our office, you know, they generally either want to go into alumni or career services, or they want to do something with social media or marketing, um, which is really great. I had a student who works in our office now who actually kind of headhunted me and oh, wanted really? to mentor wow. under me. Um, and actually, I have a Zoom call with her after this. We're oh, working okay. on our summer content plan while she's remote at like her home and I'm here. <laughs> just just loop her into this call. Just let's yeah. just merge the call together. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so with your job, you're you're doing a, a wide variety of sort of tasks, including social media. Uh, and you've got the journalism background. So what does a typical day look like for you and what kind of things are you making or producing? Oh, there's, I mean, there's, you know, there's no typical day here at all. Um, give me two weeks. I'm going to ask what, what did I do beforehand? It's like when you come back from break. Right. Um, so I will, I guess I'll, I'll say this. My main focus is as part of my job in my four areas are our social media accounts. So that's one Facebook, two Instagram, two Twitters, two YouTube channels, two unused Snapchat channels that we might be getting rid of. <laughs> um, that's one main focus. My other Any focus TikToks? Is no, we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Um, again, alumni. It's well, most of my alumni are retired. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Okay. You know, so, um, so we have that. We have the, the social media side. Then we have the website side that I manage. So I'm managing two different websites, you know, our career and alumni. And then I'm also our like liaison to our advancement staff. Um, we are one of the few alumni offices in, I think, part of the country that advancement and philanthropy do not align with my office. Um, we are alumni in career. We are under a separate VP in development. Mm. So advancement people are going to probably like hunt me down with pitchforks for saying this. They but unless, this. Uh, unless they come, unless like you're registering for an event my office is putting on, I don't really care what's in your bank account. Right. You know, I don't care that if you're going to donate. I, I personally want you to donate, but that's not my office's focus, right? Right. So what I do, I take all of the information that like we gather on alumni as far as, you know, like their event registrations, what they've reached out to us to be interested in. Um, and I kind of send all that over to advancement and help create a more robust um, customer service, customer, their customer management software. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of help fill in some of the, the blanks in their system for all the stuff that we gather on our alumni. So you, you, you offered a, a really operative term for me and that's, that's customer service. And, you know, for, for folks that are interested in going into an aspect of marketing where you're producing and curating social media content, mm -hmm. that really is customer facing. I mean, obviously customer facing, but um, there's that service aspect to it that I don't think many people consider. It's not uh, you post it and then you go on your merry way. Like there's, no. strat there's strategy in uh, developing that content, how you want to communicate that content, and then ultimately how you foster engagements and responses in the face of that content. Um, and I think right now, to your point, in, in higher education, we're going through this like constant barrage of, of crises uh, and trying to communicate all of these like world-changing things rapidly. Um, and I'm hoping that this is tapered off or will taper off for you soon because those social media portals, they're the front lines for uh, patron, student, client communication, right? 
to the university. Yeah, no, definitely. I had um, the student worker that we have that I'm meeting with after this. Uh, I I told her very upfront. I was like, "You are going to man." You know, again, this is before all of this happened. Um, last semester, or last semester, I told her I was like, "We are going to switch off once a week for every month. You are going to keep an eye on social media." Mm -hmm. at you know when a post goes live at seven o'clock i'm expecting you to check that and you know do all the customer service customer management pieces right because i don't want to throw her into something and then be like this is not what i expected this was going to be like yeah i mean there there are some days where you're cooking dinner and a post doesn't go live right <laughs> mm -hmm. and you're tr you're you know trying to saute something in a pan <laughs> oh crap hey can you come do this for me <laughs> like, right you know there are some days where it's like that you know absolutely i think it's important to know that like it's not just sit like you said it's not oh i'll write a post today hit mm -hmm. send okay yeah wash my hands of that i'm done you know the the worst situation is when like you post something that seems relatively innocuous and then you go to bed and you wake up and like your phone's blowing up and like mm -hmm. you've got department heads like what's going on they're sending you emails and students are are hitting the accounts just because like of some one rogue There's comment yeah. yeah so they they really do require a ton of moderation and you know as an industry it's like we're not doing ourselves any favors by adapting uh, to all of the new different channels. So there's this other aspect of, well, you know, a university can use all of them. I, there's no shortage of content or strategy with all those channels, but just because they're available doesn't mean you have to use them, which yeah. I think is why a lot of people that were on Snapchat are dropping their accounts because the fad has, has ended. Mm -hmm. And, um, they don't, they don't reflect any value. Yeah, they just jumped on the bandwagon and without, I mean, it's great to have an account, but with no strategy behind it, then you're just gonna flounder, mm -hmm. you know? And, and you have to have strategy in this business. It's not just, oh, I'm, like we said earlier, it's not just, I'm gonna make a post today. You know, there has to be strategy behind everything you do in order to have right. successful accounts. And, you know, that strategy, it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that strategy, it's always falling down to the social media managers, the content producers, despite the fact that strategy should be set up high and then flow downward. Um, so if like, you know, uh, philanthropic and alumni engagement basically say, like, yeah, we have a quota of $50,000 we need to meet this month. Um, we need you to build a strategy for that accordingly. Yeah. And then it, it just kind of falls by the wayside and ends up being on, on the social media producer. Then that's, that's poor form. You know, they need to be given strategy and worked with uh, to really fill in those details. Yeah. And, and yeah. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately, and fortunately, um, I can't relate to that honestly, because my assistant VP and then my director, we have weekly meetings mm -hmm. where it's we just talk about content and what the goals we have as an office. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe. I mean, I I can definitely see like to your point your scenario being what happens uh, but i i can honestly say that i am so lucky to not like to have the three big heads in my mm -hmm. office you know i'll throw my you know i can be a big head why not um the three of us being on the same page you know we have right. those weekly meetings where we talk about you know, anything, it could be, does that, do we like this part of the website? What do we think? Or it could be, um, I'll use this for example. We have coloring books of Joan of Arc mm -hmm. and uh, her pony that we have. 
um, you know, and it's a whole strategy of like, we have these coloring books for alumni to give and, you know, for their classrooms and so on and so forth. So it can be some really high level strategy like that, but then it can also be um, more like micro bits and almost, sure. uh, for lack of a better word, nitpicking, but we're all nitpicking the same thing because we want it to be consistent. And, and that's great that you do that on a frequent weekly basis. I mean, you have to, especially when you're in marketing and design, you always have to be looking at those small details because yeah. it's often the small details that get you in trouble. You know, I, like I tell my design students, like you need to proofread, you need to proofread again. You need to give that document to someone else to proofread, give it to another person, like proofread the thing 10 times if you have to. Um, print it out and then proofread it because, you know, one typo and then you drop 50K on a print run, uh, someone's in trouble, <laughs> right? Um, yep. And even though like with social media marketing and digital marketing, like most of, those th most of those things can be changed relatively easily, it's still poor form to not account for it up front. It and, is. And by looking at all of those small details, you're you're not hedging your bets. You're making a guarantee that like these things will be the way that they need to be. Yeah. Just cause you can go take down that tweet does not mean someone didn't screenshot it. You know, just oh, cause you absolutely. went and changed the Facebook post for, you know, if you did T E H instead of T H E, mm -hmm. you know, someone can screenshot it and your, your mistake is there. <laughs> there is no yes. hiding on the internet. None at all. Not at all. And you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a uh, um, an app or some kind of bot that just screen captures tweets. You know, you could put in the profile and it just screen captures everything. Yeah. Uh, it, I think in our the current political era, right? We need that. Absolutely need that. Uh, <laughs> just don't use it in higher ed. We don't need. We don't. No, need we don't need that. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, don't need you screen enough. capping our mistakes. <laughs> so so you're doing the due diligence you've got you know your daily tasks and that, that you're doing um minding the store making sure everyone's up to date sending out comms um what are you doing now amidst the the chaos of the day the outbreak yeah so now um you know our the head university accounts and my office were under the same VP. So it's been great that we're all given the same direction mm -hmm. of what we need to be doing. Um, so we have got our social media channels have gone dark with alumni and career. Uh, so now my day consists a lot of website design bits um, of, okay, I don't have to worry about social media even though I have a mini heart attack every time someone comments on a post. I was like, oh, did a post go live without, like, on accident? Oh, no. Um, but, you know, I can really focus on our websites now, which is great, because we've had several different people, you know, before me editing websites, mm -hmm. our, our websites. So now it's making our websites look like one person has edited it, you know, that it's all consistent. One voice. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, okay, this, this button looks, is this style, this one is not, let's fix that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then also a lot of it, you know, our, a lot of what my office does relies on other departments too. Right. So we have, we had events scheduled for March 25th and, you know, we're looking at the calendar saying, you know, we're getting questions about these events, but we're waiting on the office who's actually putting on the event that those events are related to, like, are they canceling that? Because if they cancel that, mm -hmm. then we have to cancel our event. Um, you know, March, March is like our biggest event heavy month. So it was a lot of, okay, the university has now pushed this back. Okay, so now this is canceled. You mm -hmm. know, we have job fairs that were canceled. We have traditions and ceremonies that were canceled because of all of this. So a lot of it, the last couple of days has been the waiting game of of that of okay now that's canceled okay now we gotta go update all of our um facebook posts or whatever right that say you know put the top postponed or canceled um go make sure these events are off 
the website now. And it's been a lot of, it's been very interesting. It's yeah. like ducks. You know, <laughs> ducks look calm and cool on the surface, but then you see their feet and they're just going. <laughs> that's, that's, that's an accurate, uh, in metaphor there, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, completely. Uh, do you think we're going to reach a point, be it, tomorrow or over the next few months where we're just absolutely dead in the water like there's just going to be nothing to do oh i hope not um you know my vp has been very you know upfront with all of us of get you know if if you don't have anything to do do professional development this is a great time mm -hmm. you know it's great what point. have you wanted what have you wanted to learn and what can we as an office do to support you in learning that? Um, which is great. You know, I've taken a whole bunch of classes. Um, thankfully, a lot of, um, like, the Ivy League schools have these free classes out now for mm -hmm. people who need to learn, you know. Send me some of those. What? Send me some of those. Oh, well, there's a whole, <laughs> there's a link, and it's just university after university on there. Awesome. Um, but you know, you have people who were in marketing who might not have taken a crisis comm class in their life. Mm -hmm. And now some of us got thrown into being crisis comm people. And we're just trying to, we're making it up as we go, trying our best, you know. Well, there is a distinction between marketing and public relations. I mean, yeah. for as you, you, you look at the Venn diagram, they definitely cross over right? There are elements and services that definitely overlap, but like they are distinctly different disciplines. Yeah. And I mean, like you see, you know, I think in, you know, the higher ed social group where we're all just sitting there and like, at what point do we go back to normal? Right. You know, at, at what yeah. point do we just start mixing stuff in? At what point, you know, does anyone have suggestions on how to handle this? You know, what's your verbiage? You know, it's a lot of, for lack of a better word, like it's a lot of great community building going on right now. Oh, and yeah. All of this, of everyone just saying like, we're all in this together. <laughs> we're going right. to hold hands and kumbaya. You know, <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting in, because you say that because we're all kind of in self-quarantine. We're, we're not in close proximity to any other human beings except our families. And yet the industry and the practitioners within it, and I think this could apply to many industries, if not all, like they're really finding common ground and, and commonalities and getting closer together. Yeah. Um, you know, this, our conversation wouldn't have happened if uh, my design educator colleagues uh you know, didn't have a need for content because they're teaching fine art classes or hand skills and all of a sudden they have to go remote and it's like, all right, how do you teach painting online? You yeah. know, uh, they could take a, a beat a from Bob the Ross class, video, school like, of thought. Yeah, they could do that. But like, you know, it's not like the, the equipment is available to all the students. So Right. Um, yeah, so this is, this, our conversation is a great case in point of that specific possibility. Um, so, um, you're, you're maintaining during the outbreak. Yeah. Um, that's good. Um, what advice do you have for seniors that are going to be graduating in this chaos? Um, you know, and you can frame it as, this, this is what you're going through now, guys. Here's how maybe I would deal with it. Or you could just respond like as if none of this ever happened. Yeah. Um, but, or just in general, like what advice would you give to uh, marketing folks that are going to be entering the field? Yeah. Um, so first off, I think it's just important to recognize like as students and like as faculty staff members, this isn't how we wanted the semester to go either. You know, if someone mm -hmm. had told me that Wednesday in the office uh, two weeks ago was going to be my last day with some of my students, I would have, you know, had given them like a much bigger hug. Yeah. Um, but, you know, use this time to really look at different brands and see how they are reacting to this. How are they pivoting? 
Mm-hmm. Um, it can give you a really good insight into like the culture of the business. Uh, it can tell you like what not to do in a crisis situation, what to do in a crisis situation. Uh, if you look up Big Sky Fitness in Connecticut, um, they sent out an email to their their base, you know, and you can go on their Facebook page. People have commented on their email, and it is just the worst, like what not to do, uh, example. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they're probably pushing sales. It's not even pushing sales. They're just saying that there's been no um, outbreak in Connecticut, and that it took it. Oh, um, by closing down the city, it took this many people out of work and they called it the flu. (laughs) So they're COVID-19 deniers, basically. Yeah, basically. Um, You should should go look them up on Facebook if they haven't taken down um, that. Hopefully Facebook did that for us, but they probably didn't. (laughs) Um, But yeah, like take take a peek at some of the companies that you're looking at applying to and seeing how they're pivoting on this. Another thing I would say is don't be afraid to take risks. And I mean, we'll just use this as an, as an example. If I can put a photo of my Corgi dressed in a taco costume with the caption, dress for the job you want <laughs> on an official university channel, you can apply to that job. You know, if it's, you know, maybe you don't meet a hundred percent of the qualifications. Mm-hmm that's fine. You know, don't feel like you need to check every box. Go and apply to that job. You, n- you never know, you know, use this time to network with people on LinkedIn, see which alumni work at that company that you want to work for. Um, you know, probably not the best time to be asking people for informational interviews, <laughs> but, you know, just making those connections Right. Uh, and sending out those requests and building your network will do a lot of good. Cool. Well, uh, we'll go ahead and end it there. Uh, thanks, Ashley, for your time. If students are interested in learning more about you and what you do in, in Longwood University, uh, where can they go? How, how um, can they get so there? They can email me directly. My email is jonesab2, so it's the first two letters of the alphabet, and then the number two. Uh, at longwood.edu um, or they can go to the longwood.edu uh, website cool all right check them out all right uh thanks ashley and yeah, uh thanks. stay safe out there okay <laughs> yeah you too all right.